So last night I watched this movie. And I watched it because I found the DVD in a box of old stuff and realized I hadn't already watched this DVD. And I was like, okay. And that was pretty much the entire thought process that went into watching this. And this movie is called Funland. The tagline is a dangerous comedy. So to start with, this movie isn't really a comedy. As far as I can tell, this movie was an attempt at either a drama or a straight horror movie that they got to the point of test screening and were like, oh god, what have we done? How do we fix this? And the only way that they could think of was to go back and do some reshoots and desperately try to record a few jokes to tag on to a drama to try to turn it into a comedy. I, I don't even... I don't even know. I don't even know. There was, like, one funny joke in this movie, but it was, like, a totally separate scene with none of the characters who are in the rest of the movie. It, it felt reshooty. If it wasn't, then the production that made this movie was so messed up that it felt like two separate productions. But, okay. Okay. So, this movie was made in 1987, but it feels like it's from, like, 1944, I don't even know. I'm going to try to... Okay, well, no. First, I'm going to start with the tiny bit of research that I just did. This movie was written and directed by a guy named Michael A. Simpson. And this is one of the few features that he was the writer for, although he has directed and produced several movies. I think he produced this one, too. Uh... Maybe not. I don't know. There's not really credits on the back of the DVD I have to look at. So... This guy, Michael Simpson, was the producer and director on Sleepaway Camps 2 and 3, which kind of suggests to me that this dude's intent was just to sort of put something out there to make some money. But Funland is like the only movie he wrote to. And like I said, I think this wasn't supposed to be a comedy until a certain point in production where they were like panicking. I, I'm going to start describing what happens in the plot of this movie. The movie is about this guy who's a clown at an amusement park. And he's, like, kind of unhinged. The movie gets into that in an undefined amount of time ago, he had some sort of mental breakdown. And the only person in his life who felt like supporting him after that mental breakdown happened to be his boss at the amusement park, who allowed him to stop working at the amusement park as their accountant and take up a job as a clown because... That was how this guy was dealing with his mental breakdown. This is all in the movie. This is all text in the movie. I'm not guessing at any of this stuff. This is things the movie literally said with those words. So, that's supposed to be funny, I guess? I don't know. This dude has, like, slipped so deep into the clown persona that early in the movie he's, like, asking them to change the name on his checks to the clown name which is apparently owned by a fast food company that he is theoretically an employee for. Again, the movie is like, this is funny. And it's not. Um, but so what happens is this guy, this nice dude who was running the amusement park, dies under mysterious circumstances, and then the park is promptly sold to the mob. The mafia characters in this movie are all, like, ridiculous ridiculous caricatures which is very strange because basically almost all the rest of the staff members of the park even if they're just bit parts are pretty carefully depicted as like normal people like th there's one or two characters who are kind of like wacky but like even madcap clown guy comes off as like a dude with problems not a character in a comedy film he comes off as like a, like a real person who's really suffering actual mental health issues but anyway, so the stress of the new bosses kind of, like, cutting all the costs at the park and being, like, mafioso dudes, like, in a movie, causes this clown guy to, like, go completely off his fucking rocker? And again, the movie is like, it's real funny! He has a gun now! Oh no, it's hilarious that he's shooting into a, a, a group of people that includes children because he's such a bad shot! Look, he keeps missing! Isn't this funny? And I'm like, guys, he's... He's literally on a clock tower with a gun talking to a puppet. Oh, he has a puppet. He has a puppet of a pepperoni with a face on it. And he talks to this puppet. And at first it's like, oh, okay. This is, this is like some, uh, 
some some like Chucky stuff or or some Conky. Oh, any, anybody here who remembers Conky from, from Bubbles' buddy Conky? Oh, it, it's right out of that. It's perfect. It's just like that. But then, as the movie starts increasing the stakes with like real issues, like your boss is a murderer kind of real issues that the movie isn't treating as comedy. It's it's just like the mob moved in. One of them's being nice, and the other one will literally beat you up and kill you. And this is funny, I guess, because you need the job. Ha, 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 ha. I don't know. There was a sight gag in this movie where they're like, oh, by the way, the park is really racist. They hire black dudes to run a watermelon stand and dress them in overalls and nothing else. And I was just like, what? Is there a punchline to this joke? Oh, no, that's... Was that just supposed to be funny on its own, or was that just supposed to be this movie's from the 80s? Like, what is this? There's another scene in this movie where they just have a crowd shot of people, and the KKK are there. And I was like, why did they put the KKK in this movie? Are they coming back? Are they fu Like, I mean, literally hoods. Literally white sheets and hoods just walking around, milling around in the mob. They were, like, on vacation that day. And so I was like, why did they do that? Why did they dress the set actors as like why did they dress their their extras as kkk members and i went and looked up the production of this movie and it turns out that those weren't extras they just pointed cameras at a crowd at a six flags to film this movie and the kkk was just at that six flags that day and they were like okay and they just filmed it and they're like this is going in the movie no context this is just normal this is what america is like in 1987 apparently jesus christ Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, so where was I? Oh, yeah, so Not Conky the Pepperoni. Um, Not Conky the Pepperoni is at first like, hey, they should be respecting you, Greg. The oh, Greg isn't the guy's name. Greg is the clown character's name. There's also, like, another actor playing the same clown character in the movie who never interacts with main clown character guy, really, but then they become, like, rivals in Crazy Person's Head. He's the guy he's trying to shoot. It this movie is so confused. But, but, like, okay, okay, let me let me stop sidetracking myself from this puppet. At first, the puppet is, like, talking like it's this dude's id. Like, 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 it's like, oh, you you should be more respected than this. Or, or maybe you should tell him how you really feel. Or, like, people will leave the room after saying something mean to clown guy. And the puppet will say something behind their back that's cruel. And then he'll argue with the puppet. Like, oh, that's not nice to say. Oh, well, you wanted to say it. And he's doing this. After a while, the puppet literally just starts moving and talking on its own with, like, a spooky voice to this guy. And this is where the movie took a fascinating fucking turn. Shortly after the point where the puppet is just animate on its own when the dude is alone in a room, the guy starts getting really unhinged and, like, seeking revenge and stuff. And, like, his dead boss comes back as a ghost and eats lunch with him and tells him that the mobster guys killed him, which... I think the movie just took as truth. The movie was treating that as true, even though in the text of the film and the subtext of the film, there is no evidence of that. Like, the movie doesn't present his death as mysterious circumstances. It just kind of looks a little mysterious given the way the movie is running. No one in the movie claims the death is mysterious other than the hallucinated ghost of the dead guy who says that to the crazed clown guy. He says, I was murdered. You should get revenge for me. At which point the clown guy is like, I agree, I should attack the other clown who had nothing to do with this. But it was around that point where Not Conky, the pepperoni puppet, started being like this like change in tone where instead of being like, you should get yours, Greg, you deserve to be happy, Greg. It started being like, uh, Greg, Greg, maybe, maybe don't, don't use the rifle, Greg. M maybe stop and think about this for a minute, Greg, Greg, the... The children won't like it if you shoot someone, Greg. The children don't like murder, Greg. Remember, children? D the happiness, you remember, Greg? Greg, please put down the gun. This is the puppet. This is the crazy puppet with, like, the spooky voice starts literally begging him to calm down. And I was like, movie, this isn't funny. No part of this character's fucking descent into madness is funny because it all actually had, like verisimilitude. I'm not saying the dude was like, there was no depiction of like a real actual mental health issue, but this character's depiction of like movie time crazy was dramatic and empathetic rather than cartoonish and laughable. And the movie kept being like, it's funny how sad he is, isn't it? And it's like, no. And it's like, if only someone would talk to him like a person, he wouldn't be going crazy and talking to puppets. Isn't that hilarious? And I'm like, no. 
But anyway, at the end of the movie, he, like, accidentally kills the mobster. And then there's this, like, long fucking shot of him, like, snapping out of the madness, becoming fucking lucid, and there's blood on his hands. And he's, like, panicking and, like, oh, no, oh, no. And the movie just holds on this shot, like... The music goes somber. It it pulls out, and he looks out from the balcony of the of the clock tower he was standing on. And they, they don't have a reaction shot of the crowd, but he's clearly seeing that the crowd is seeing him. And it's just it's so painful and horrible. And then the movie like jump comedy cuts away from it to like the next day and shit. And it was like movie, the fuck are you doing? But anyway. When the movie jump cuts away from the fucking murder clown having killed somebody, and he is clearly distressed by this, he, it cuts back and he's like, oh, he's not the clown anymore, he's not Greg anymore, he's who he was before then, he's accountant man again, everything's fine, everything's normal, this isn't additionally worrying at all. He's in charge of the park now. That's not s scary. The, the person in this conversation with him keeps repeatedly trying to address the events of the previous day and his descent into madness, and he keeps being like, oh, well, yeah, 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 but anyway, so uh, the overhead for the park tickets, I think we need to maybe cut those cut And, like, he's not addressing anything that happened, and then at the end, like, the, the other guy is just like, well, I guess you're my boss now, here's your puppet back, and then as he leaves, it's like a shot from outside the office and he's talking to the puppet about how they need to keep the madness a secret now and then the movie just ends and and then the movie just ends like this ah I, my brain couldn't deal with this fucking movie because it kept being like how funny is this and none of it is funny like I don't okay one of the things that happens in this movie is that before the mob buys out the park, one of the people on the park's, park's board of directors is this lady who's like hardcore business school, like, we need to be making more money, oh, we, we, we should fire the weird clown guy, we don't even need a clown, that's overheads we don't need, y you know, that kind of business lady. And then when the park gets bought out by mobsters, they're talking her language and she's on their side until they take it too far and start like hiring burlesque acts for the children's theme park for some reason which they don't show that this movie keeps telling and not showing things that would have been funny in a comedy it was fucking but anyway so like she has this turn she she slowly starts siding with the people in the park against the mobsters the but at no point is there, like, an uprising of the park employees against the mobsters. They all just sort of decide that they don't like that the mafia is in charge of their theme park now, and that's it. They just keep working there. That's just life now. Life is terrible. This is all normal and legal. And, like, fucking... It didn't belong in a comedy. The way that they were putting it together, the way that they were assembling this movie, none of it was funny. It was all assembled, like... Like... I don't know. It felt like a poor attempt at a postmodern comedy, but this movie predates that entire concept. Like where where it wasn't like, oh, these characters are awkward and you embarrassedly laugh at Will Ferrell. It wasn't like this char th this character is a dumbass and should have known better than to dig this hole for himself. Like the characters in this movie are basically all trapped in this situation. And then the situation keeps getting worse for them, and that's supposed to be funny. And, like, the only cartoon characters in the movie, as per the depictions of their actors, were, like, this one lady who was on the security team who was really funny, but I think part of reshoots. And other than that, like, the, the bad guys in the movie were these mafioso guys who didn't do any funny things, but were such, like, ridiculous caricaturish impressions of movie mobsters that they were impossible to take seriously as characters at all. But then the movie was just like, and they're a legitimate threat. Which is funny. And it's like, no, they aren't a legitimate threat. And that's not funny. And them failing to be a legitimate threat isn't in this movie. Like, it's not like they show up and they're like, oh, we's, we's the tough guys and you need to take us seriously and listen to us. And then, like, he trips over or he spills his coffee. None of that. They're, they're trying to depict legitimately scary mafioso dudes, except for that they're trying to do it with, like, the worst fucking 
cut rate impression of a like they're not doing bad italian accents they're doing like bad marlon brando impressions like multiple people sitting at a table are each doing their own bad marlon brando impression at each other and then the movie is like these characters are real people this is this is for serials and it was like what the fuck am i watching oh my god oh I touched briefly on the casual racism all over this movie. I didn't even get into the casual sexism. There is a subplot in this movie where one character who works at the park is just legitimately constantly harassing this other character who works at the park. Where he's like the park photographer and she's like... I don't know, actually. Early in the movie, she's being hired for some sort of job, and then the movie keeps having this quote-unquote running joke where he's, like, harassing her and trying to take, like, not normal pictures of her and trying to convince her to pose for them and she keeps being she keeps being at different jobs in the park and i think i don't know maybe she was like asking to get moved and the guy kept finding her but that's not in the movie i'm guessing and like in the end the payoff to this joke is that he just keeps doing it and is like fucking up a real news cast to be a douchebag to this girl and she says oh listen you're a douchebag but I think it's charming. And then that's the end of that bit. And I was like, what the fuck is this movie? I don't even, I don't even know. I, I don't know. The, the crazy clown guy, when he reverts back to, like, his, his accountant man persona, the thing about that is that you never see him before he was a clown in this movie. So when he reverts back to his sane person persona, it's really apparent that what he's actually doing is a hardcore impression of the former owner of the park. And the idea of this dude not having his own personality anymore and, like, flip-flopping between who he interprets the mascot clown to be and the pepperoni man and his former boss's ghost. Like the idea of him, how do I, fr it was like, imagine if you tried to edit split into a slapstick comedy, but you had exactly one scene you were allowed to shoot new to do this. So it was mostly you and an editor in a room with like comedy sound effects and pulling the music from scenes but you can't pull the music from all the scenes because then there's no music but you're not allowed to record funny music and put that in here so it's like you take a movie like split and just mute half the scenes and add like slide whistles that was the fucking movie i watched except for a room full of dudes doing marlon brando impressions like ah Ugh, oh, fuck. The best thing is, the back of the box of this movie legit describes a movie where multiple clowns fight mobsters, which never happens in this movie at all. Like, even slightly. Oh, God. I'm just trying to wrap my fucking brain around this. I, I can't even... I don't know. Okay, let me tell you about the one funny joke in this movie. Okay, so there's this, like like movie ugly lady where she's just like sticking out her teeth and they put thick glasses on her and she's like a little overweight but she gets hired as a security guard and there's a scene in the movie where this couple at the end of the day have locked their keys in the car in the park parking lot and park security sends someone in a golf cart and it's her and she's like calling it in she's like oh it's a 1022 keys locked in i'll have them out in a jiffy and then she's like oh step away from the car step away from the car give me space to work and, like, she's, like, this whole production, and, and then she just whips out a gun that they apparently issued her to be security at a fucking fun land, fun park. And she just, like, blows out the window and pumps the fucking door full of holes and, like, shoots out the fucking windshield. And then she, like, reaches over and just grabs the door handle and rips it, and the whole fucking door falls off the car. She's like, have a nice day, folks, and hops back into her fucking thing and drives away. That was great. That was real funny, but it, like, 100% belonged in a movie that had other jokes in it, because this movie didn't have other jokes in it. There was a scene I laughed at that I don't know if it was trying to be funny or not, but there was a scene I laughed at where, like, park guy dies, the guy who owns the park dies, and they're, like, at his funeral, and no one gives a shit. Like, I, I don't know if it was just bad acting or what, but they, like, have a panning shot of the crowd, and, like, no one's crying, no one looks sad, his wife is sitting there, like, checking her watch, Meanwhile, fucking clown guy is in his clown costume, but with, like, black and white sad face paint makeup on, giving a eulogy. Oh, 
I didn't mention this. The guy's clown outfit is like a, a clown who is a chef dressed as a pizza. So I want you to picture sad clown makeup in a colorful clown chef pizza costume being the only sad person at a funeral where he's like breaking down. He's not doing a comedy bit. He's like breaking down and weeping about his dead best friend. And it keeps cutting to everyone else in this fucking funeral who gives so little of a shit about the dead guy that they're not even like upset about the clown. Like I, I don't know what the movie was going for. I, it wasn't like a whole bunch of surf- circus performers were at this guy's funeral because he ran a circus and the whole, there's like, a, there's, it's not like there's a seal balancing a ball and, and, and a bunch of fucking mimes and somebody doing like a lion taming trick at the funeral. No, the only circus person at this funeral is the clown. And he, he's not like doing clown things. He's just dressed as a clown fucking having an emotional breakdown because his only fucking ally in life is gone and that dude's wife is there like yeah 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 wrap it up i need to fire some of you people before i leave here like i can't even i don't the only way that this movie could have actually been like a straight comedy is if you are a sociopath Like, if you just have no fucking empathy for human beings, then this movie might become funny. Because most of it is just... Why is the only good actor in your movie playing the sad clown murderer? Like, and that's the other thing. There's no consequences to this guy. Because in a scene that isn't in the movie at all, they just skip over this happening. He somehow isn't held responsible for the shooting. And they thought it was the mob guy, I guess? I don't know. They didn't get into that they didn't if i was writing this movie and there was a scene where a clown goes crazy and tries to murder people with a rifle but then the mobster tries to steal his rifle back to murder someone else with it and then he accidentally kills the mobster with the rifle and in the aftermath the cops think that the mobster was the shooter i would have explained that in a way at all because this movie at one point addresses that there are just gunshots happening in the park and no one gives a shit, but everyone can hear it. And also everyone saw the clown with the gun at one point. And then they're just like, nah, the cops decided to pin it on the mobster because he's dead. And they don't even get into like how or why. Like, you know what would have been funny? Pointing out that he didn't leave fingerprints on the the gun because he was dressed as a clown and wearing like fucking Mickey Mouse gloves. But they didn't do that in this movie. They didn't have like, oh, everybody knows clown guy from the local theme park. He wouldn't hurt a fly. That's not in the movie. There's no, there's no police at the park after a murder at the park. You don't see any of this. And this movie was, like, riddled with bizarre attempts at comedy B-plots. Like, there's this one point in the movie where they're just like, Oh, remember how we're gonna have a charity roller coaster drive? And I was like, no, movie, this is the first time you're mentioning it. Like, oh, well, the local radio host who's famous is gonna ride the roller coaster for charity. And I'm just like, are you introducing this character in this scene, movie? And the movie's like, kinda. So anyway, he rides the coaster. He's riding the coaster. It's... It doesn't have loops in it, but he's throwing up, I guess? The Six Flags wouldn't let us attach a camera to a good coaster, so we're kind of faking it. This character is in the movie for the scene now. Oh, he's gone. And then later in the movie, like, the next day on the news, they're like, Oh, that world record is still going strong. The coaster's still going. And everyone's like, oh, we forgot to turn off the coaster. Oh, uh." and... Like, you have to understand that it's not funny the way that they execute any of this. And it's, like, getting in the way of the attempted clown shooting. This movie is, like, building up to a clown shooting because it can't decide if it's funny or scary. It's neither. But it's tr- it can't decide if it's trying to be funny or scary. So it can't decide if it's hilarious how bumbling the murderer clown is or if it's scary that a man has been pushed to these fucking extremes. But whichever one of those two things that's happening, the whole element with the the charity coaster thing is like super duper in the way of that and eating up its its screen time and like disrupting the flow of dialogue in the end scene. Like my fucking brain, I can't even. Oh God, like 
Okay, I've watched movies that were literally pieced together from incomplete footage of multiple attempted films. And this movie felt like that. It really, really felt like there was a movie about a crazed guy in a theme park, and then there was another movie about mobsters in a boardroom. And, like, two scenes filmed from, like, a pre-make of Paul Blart, but it's a girl, I guess? To be fair, that sounds, like, that... M more like... More like observe and report pre-make, but a girl. I shouldn't have associated it with Paul Blart because like Paul Blart sucks, and this 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 random bit part mall cop lady was actually pretty funny in this movie. But ugh, fuck, I, I don't know, I don't know. I can't wrap my head around the film I just watched because it's so weird and disjointed and like this movie was made by a person who thought that casual sexism, casual racism, and just a fairly legitimate depiction of a descent into madness were all f comedy fodder. Comedy fodder. This guy thought that was funny. And I feel like the film I watched is less a poor attempt at a comedy or a poor attempt at a horror and more an inadvertent like mirror being held up to 1987 America where this shit flies Th this this movie got made and everyone was like yep that's not weird the KKK gets a free cameo in this movie because in 1987 they were just going for a Six Flags day at the Six Flags that these motherfuckers were filming in and everybody at the Six Flags and in this movie production were like, those people are normal, dressed in full KKK attire walking around this theme park. Fucking 1987. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I kind of recommend that if you can find a copy of this movie, watch it, because, like, drink every time the movie just shot itself in the foot. Ugh. Fun land. Fun land, everybody. Oh, and there are, like, several lies on this DVD about, like, like the quality of the DVD. Who, who did this? Legacy Entertainment Incorporated included a trailer in the menus on this DVD, that when I played the trailer, it just, like, showed a clip show of some super pixelated screenshots of something, and had, like, a running tally of actors' names, none of whom are in this movie. And I think that it was a trailer for Legacy Entertainment's, like, releases? But they forgot to do the part where they name any of the movies or tell me where I could buy these things. So, as far as I can tell, Legacy Entertainment does not have a website, and may not even exist anymore. But I found that a very humorous trailer. Uh, they also claim that there's, like, Dobly Digital on this. The audio on this fucking DVD was mono. Um, what else? What else? Well, I've kind of harped on them claiming this is a comedy a few times. It's really not. Also, fascinatingly, this movie is apparently rated PG. I'm literally only just noticing this now. Back to the subject of utterly damning mirrors being held up to 1980s America. This movie, where, like, multiple people get shot and tortured, when Ghost Guy comes back, he has, like, a gruesome bullet hole in the center of his forehead. F fucking the hardcore depiction of madness. Every female character in this movie, except for the security guard lady, gets their ass grabbed, like, twice. Every character. And it's... It's always just, like... Scene dressing when it happens. It's always just like, that's... Walking in the room, if you're a lady. Oh, God. Fuck the 80s. Fuck them good. Ugh. Just, uh. Oh. I'm trying to think if I can think of anything else. I don't know. The back of this box legitimately sidesteps the mental health issues being depicted for the main character. The I'm going to read this to you. 
In this dark comedy, the mysterious death of the owner of an amusement park prompts his widow to sell the property to a group of mobsters, the Damaro family. That's not... They spelled Damaro on the back of this box differently to how it's spelled in the movie, interestingly. The atmosphere at the park, which previously had been a low-key family operation, is now cost, is now replaced by a cut-at-any-price... No, cut-costs-at-any-price attitude. That is a fucking weird way... There's, like, quote marks around cut-costs-at-any-price. I don't know. The eccentric, the eccentric franchise clown Bruce Berger, David Lander, who I've never heard of or seen anything else, will not let this park be overtaken as he and his band of park cronies plot revenge with unusual results. That's... That's suggesting a level of coherence to this movie, including my barely capable... like my, I'm barely able to read this. I'm so flabbergasted. But that doesn't describe the events of this movie. Like, not really it's not the park cutting costs that upsets the clown it's that they hire a more expensive other clown who's also playing this bruce Berger character the movie didn't do a good job of explaining this because the pizza themed clown apparently is the mascot for a burger franchise but their burgers are pizza shaped this is something that if this movie was trying to be funny, would have been in the movie more. There's, like, one quick scene of, like, training the staff at the burger place how to shape their pizza burger. I, I don't even fucking know. This movie desperately needed to show me what the fuck it was talking about there, because it probably would have been funny. But instead, they just didn't. And, like, I don't even... When it says he will not let the park be overtaken with his band of park cronies plotting revenge with unusual results the results aren't unusual at all well it's unusual in the sense that it makes no fucking sense in the context of living in the real world but at the beginning of the movie this dude playing his name isn't bruce i forget his real name in the movie but this this guy playing this clown is like the lowest of the low at the park and at the end of the movie he owns the park and everything's good somehow which the movie then treats as ominous because it's finally acknowledging that he's a dangerous deranged individual at the end of the fucking movie where it finally realizes that's not funny and plays like a dark like ooh kind of music sting as the credits start to roll and it's like movie you can't acknowledge that now <laughs> fucking goddamn but like okay his band of park cronies are the imaginary dead guy who haunts him i guess he's, he's not really haunted by this there's an excellent scene where he's in the cafeteria having like an open joyous conversation with his dead best friend and like it pans out to him alone at a table having an animated conversation with nothing and people are like looking over like yeah that's bruce and then going back to their meals and i guess it was supposed to be funny that no one of this man's friends or acquaintances give a shit about him but i mean none of them gave a shit about his other guy like i don't what this movie wasn't addressing the like cold lack of empathy on the part of all the quote-unquote normal people in this movie because that would have been you know fodder for comedy in a movie and this movie wasn't doing that it was alongside these dickheads laughing at the guy whose health like mental health is collapsing like that's that's where this movie expected to be funny with you it expected you to think it was funny that this dude's life is falling apart and his sense of reality is dissolving that was supposed to be funny to you. It was equally supposed to be funny when he snaps back out of it after having taken it too far with blood on his hands and horror in his face. Fucking film. But anyway, so his cr his park cronies that he plans with are the fucking pepperoni puppet that is eventually begging him to put down the gun and like they 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 kick him out of his dressing room and he has to hang out in the now abandoned wax figure museum and there's like there, there's like I think it was supposed to be James Bond, but they couldn't actually have it be James Bond, so it was like a guy in a white suit with a bow tie talking like a spy, and I think it was supposed to be James Bond, but I don't know for sure, because I don't think the movie knew for sure, but anyway, so he's like, there's this like wax figure that he's talking to, and a puppet, and a ghost, those are, that's his band of park cronies, and they do sort of develop a plan at one point, but they like go over the plan in better detail than the movie depicts his execution of the plan. And so I don't know if they were trying to show that he didn't follow through on the plan correctly, or if the movie failed to show him following through on the plan correctly. Like, I, I don't know what the intentions of the script were because like, frankly, I don't know how much of a script this fucking movie had. There were a lot of lines in it, 
so someone had to write dialogue, but I mean, a script will usually involve some way of m mapping the plot of the movie. Like, you know how when you watch a movie and things are introduced so that they can be addressed later, especially in a comedy where this is known as the setup and punchline to jokes. This movie kind of didn't do that structurally. And it wasn't doing like an avant-garde thing where stuff is happening out of art, out, out of order or like, it was just kind of incompetent. It was just like, here's a scene, here's a scene, here's another scene. And like, there was some progression. There was some flow of events, but like, I'm trying to think of another movie I watched that was this dreamlike without being intentionally dreamlike. And I can't. The only other movies that I can think of that have this sort of, like, like floaty quality to the series of events usually are doing it on purpose for a reason, like, where this movie takes place in someone's mind or is a fantasy or something. Like, like... Oh, fuck, this movie felt like, like... Okay... I'm going to say this movie felt like live action Fantasia on LSD, but I don't mean like you took LSD and watched a bunch of people in costumes reenact Fantasia. I mean, you snuck LSD into the coffee of an entire cast of crew and said, okay guys, who here has seen Fantasia? And when no one raised their hands, said, good, do it and started filming it. Can you imagine what it would be like to watch that fucking ridiculous travesty of a film? That's, that's kind of what I watched here. Oh, God. One of the only people in this movie who I actually wanted to take a bullet was the guy playing the other clown, who was like this, like, almost to the point of parody. It might have been supposed to be parody, but nothing. there's no comeuppance for this character. So it didn't feel like a parody character where he eventually learns his lesson or at least gets, like, mud on his face or something. Like, I mean, like, th this dude was constantly ranting about how the clown job that pays really well is super beneath him because he wants to do Shakespeare. And, like, I mean, literally constantly ranting about it. Like, to the other clown whose job he took, to the person who's trying to do his makeup, to, like, the person who's trying to tell him he's late to be on set. Like, he's just constantly ranting about how this whole thing is super-duper beneath him, and he keeps coming off as a giant asshole. Like, in a movie where every female character is constantly having her butt grab for walking around in an office, this character comes off as exceptionally misogynistic in that movie. He, he, he comes off as more misogynistic than every other dude in this movie who's constantly ass-grabbing and harassing women. This guy, like, asks a woman her opinion on his rant. He's like, oh, I'm the perfect actor, don't you think? And she's like, well, you know, I think I would agree with that. And in the middle of her sentence, she's like, I wouldn't expect a lowly woman to be able to formulate opinions and continues ranting at her about how smart he is. And it was like, oh... Oh, wow. I've changed my mind, movie. Please shoot this man. Please let him take a bullet. And then he doesn't. He doesn't take a bullet. He doesn't... I don't even think he even realizes anyone was shooting at him. Fuck, this movie was frustrating. The, the more I sit and try to think about the weird, bizarre attempt at a movie I just watched, the more upset I get about it. Because, like... There is a little bit of the bones of an actually pretty solid take on this as comedy. There's definitely the bones in this for it to be a really solid horror movie, too. Because, like, the idea of this being... Sh like, if the girl who just got hired and is constantly being harassed by this dickhead photographer, if she was the main character in a movie where she's sort of stuck at a job, like, she's stuck in this dead-end job, she can't quit... And this, the only person who really talks to her at her new job is this fucking dickhead who keeps trying to take pictures up her skirt. And meanwhile, the, the politics of the park are, are rapidly descending into a shootout between a hallucinating clown and a fucking mob enforcer. Could you imagine that movie from the point of view of just someone stuck in this? Like, but that's not what happens in the movie at any point. Like, I don't think that, I don't think that girl has a name. I don't think they named her character in this movie, for fuck's sakes. But 
it could have been a really solid comedy if they had just, you know, had jokes in it or, or like, <sighs> there's a huge element of the plot of this movie is that the guy who owned the park and this weird clown guy are like big friends. They've been friends for a long time. They really trust each other. When, when they're talking early in the movie about cutting costs, the guy who owns the park is like, we can't get rid of Bruce. He's the lifeblood of this park. And then when that guy dies, Bruce is like weeping at his funeral and shit, but they, they could have made these two characters be boobs they could have made these two characters have screen time together and be boobs and instead of having like an empathetic and chilling depiction of a man collapsing in his own brain uh, under all the stress of the world they could have depicted where these two characters were both already a little bit unhinged but also enabling each other because the movie hinted at that but very clearly didn't understand or really know any of these ideas or concepts. It certainly didn't know the word enabling. I don't think this movie knew the word mental health, for fuck's sakes. Oh, God. I don't know. Like, shit, man, an ironic laugh track that just slowly descends into the people being recorded for the laugh track, questioning the movie and not laughing anymore, would have turned all the footage I watched into outright hilarity. But it would have been, like, really postmodern to do that. I would have laughed. I would have thought that was funny. But, like, I can't imagine... I'm trying to think of the mindset that would make this movie. I'm trying to think of the kind of person that would be like, Alright, it's about a clown, but the clown loses his mind! And then there's mobsters! And the mobsters and the clown never directly have conflict with each other at any point. Because the clown is obsessed with the other clown! Who we introduce, like, two-thirds of the way into the movie, is a total shit heel, and then gets no comeuppance, or even, like... There isn't even a scene where that guy is like, Oh, well, it's a good thing I was there during the shootout. It could have been crazy if I hadn't have helped these people. And he's clearly lying. That's not even in the movie. There isn't even a scene where it's supposed to be funny that the quote-unquote better clown is a worse person. That's that's not a joke that the movie does. Like, that's, that's why this felt like a failed attempt at a dramatic film that they reshot to be the worst comedy attempt I've ever fucking seen. Like, but I don't know. I don't know. This guy went on to make sequels to Sleepaway Camp. The hell? I don't know. I kind of want to be like, in conclusion, funny thing, but I don't have any conclusions to make about this movie. In conclusion, thank God it's not 1987 any fucking more. Ugh. My apologies if you live somewhere where it still is, like North America. Oh, wait. Shit, that's me. Uh, all right, that's all. I gotta go.